Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm April Honey. So I've been told a lot that a lot of people are still having trouble laying down the nine piece path, the natural dirt path that we use on natural islands. And it does prevent a lot of people from actually making natural islands. So I'm going to show you a few different ways that I lay down the path and maybe that will help you in your journey as far as building a natural island. Hopefully it does help you out a little bit. So in our menu, a lot of people like to use the island designer in order to lay down these paths and I just don't. Uh, one of the reasons is because the way the pathing tool is designed is that I just kind of memorized where they go. This is entirely optional. You don't have to, but I find it to be a little bit bothersome to hit the plus sign and then change pieces over and over again when it is really easy to change them within this program right here. So the way these are laid down is that it goes down underneath your character first, then it goes to the front of you and it goes to your character's right in the front, your character's front left, your direct right, your direct left, and then your back right, your back left, and directly behind you is last. So taking those principles in mind, I'll show you how I lay down a natural path, just sort of the way I would do it on my own island. So we have this clean, empty slate here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a path leading to those stairs. I may or may not use it because the bridge is right over there. So what I'm going to do is I always start with the end piece, of course. I tend to do them two wide just usually, but I'll show you what it looks like with three wide. Now I start facing the left because the next piece right here is gonna be my character's front right. And that just made it a little bit easier for me. So if you do it by this method, then I'm going to go ahead and place the piece in front of me. And since that right piece is already taken, I'm going to go ahead and do the left piece, which is going to be for me, it's going to be this one right here, just because we don't really want to keep these too straight. You know what I mean? It just stops looking natural if it's in a complete straight line, which is weird because I know dirt paths in real life do have straight lines and all of that, but it just doesn't work in Animal Crossing so well. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this bottom corner piece right here and then go right in front of me. And then this other one is to the right as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use the straight piece. Now here's where it's going to start getting a little varied. You don't really want to have too many of the same repeating pieces. It does look a little weird if you do that. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to change the width and make it narrower and wider a little bit so that it just kind of mushes together a little bit better. So I'm taking this piece right here. I'm going to go ahead and use this piece going up right here to the right. And then here I am going to use two of the straight pieces so it narrows in a little bit. So instead of making it a diagonal, I went ahead and I narrowed that path out. And then when you do that, you can go ahead and use the another straight piece. It doesn't really matter which one. And then maybe you can decide to break it up right around here and just kind of leave it open just a little bit. It does help if you break these up just a little bit. And then you go ahead and just continue it on. Maybe leave a one space, do a little filler path or throw a weed right there, something like that. When you restart it again, you don't want it to be so perfectly lined up. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to work very well that way. And then we're going to bring it over here to our stairs. And right at our stairs, I'm going to kind of cap it off. Okay, so we made our path over here. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the most important part of this whole process is. The path as it stands right here, it doesn't necessarily look right and they never do. So here's the problem. I'm going to find a million things wrong with this. I just am. There's probably a hundred thousand ways I can change it and make it look quote unquote, more natural. And this is true. I'm always going to find things that are wrong with it. And it's really easy to delete it and to kind of get a little defeated at this point. But what I found out is really more important than the path. It's what you put around the path that matters. So I didn't bring a lot to decorate with. I do just have some trees and flowers that I kind of always keep in my pocket. So we're going to go ahead and use those. What really matters when you do something like this is keeping a little bit 
bit of a variation. So I'm gonna throw some bushes, some trees, and just some natural elements here to kind of help it along a little bit. And then I'm gonna throw down some flowers and I'll get back to you to talk to you about how this worked and why I did what I did. Okay, so what I've done is only added literally two different kinds of items. I have this destination signpost, which I thought would help with a little bit of layering and some height, and then these little bunny gardens. Otherwise, I only used trees and bushes. And already, do you see what I mean about the path? It looks super natural and really cute, just leading up to the stairs right there. Very whimsical and nature -y. It's exactly what we're going for in this area right here, or for, for our purposes right here. The one thing, like if something like this bothers you a lot, the one thing I've found that really, really helps is a leaf pile. So what I would do is just go ahead and lay down the green leaf pile right over here and maybe add another one over here somewhere just to add a little bit of movement in the path and to kind of break out some of that brownness that we have going on. And there we go. There we have it. This is the first way that I have that we can lay down a brown or like a regular dirt path. And hopefully that helped you guys. Let me go and clear this all out and I will come back to you with another version of that. The other thing that I see people do is they use one single tile piece in order to make their path and it's a little windy. This works really well in like gardens and low fields and things like that where you don't wanna take up a lot of space. It's not an actual walkway, but just kind of cutting through something like cutting through a wheat field or something like that. So you're gonna to wanna to find a path that has these straight pieces in it in order to be able to do this. And you're just gonna start with an end piece like this. In general, I go with a straight piece first. Um, otherwise, it just looks like a weird tip kind of hanging out of the middle of nowhere. And how to connect these is that you take the piece that naturally fits, like depending on which direction you're going, if you're going to the right or the left. Um, I'm gonna go to the left, so I'm gonna use this top right corner right here. And then I'm gonna use this bottom left corner right over here in order to connect it. And then, you can either continue going to the right or you can go straight up. So I'll continue just for fun um, this way and then I'll work it back up to the stairs. This works really well if you kind of want to put something like to block the actual staircase and you just kind of want to go around it. So then I'm going to connect to this piece right here and I'm going to use like a straight piece and I never use more than two of these in a row. So I might use another one right here just for fun. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start winding this back. Now, because the staircase is too wide and I have a single wide path, I'm not gonna wanna come at it straight on. I'm gonna wanna come at it from a little bit of an angle just to make it look a little more, I don't know, natural. I guess if natural is even a thing in what we're doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna wanna come at it a little um, sort of like this. So we're not heading at it straight on. We're just gonna kind of come at it at a little bit of an angle before we end it off. It just feels a little more natural like that. And I will show you what kind of scenario this might look best in because it really doesn't look good right now and it's not going to. Also, uh, the one thing I didn't do that I probably should have done would have been to break it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and just kind of show you how that would look. So instead of putting a weed right here, I'm gonna opt to use a code. I think what I'm gonna put right here is maybe like a wood plank and that'll kind of fill it in just a little bit. You could also use one of these leaf fillers or something like this. That always works too. Those are really cute in an area like this. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use just a regular sort of plank path. And then that just kind of brings you to that pathway right there just to see if this looks better I'm gonna try and extend this down just a little bit to see if it goes a little bit better okay so I went ahead and used two planks to kind of connect them a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in and show you guys what that is going to look like and I will be right back
So this is one of the ways that I can think of that this dirt path in the skinny variation would look really good. Generally, it's like cutting through a meadow like this, um, some kind of a flower field or a wheat field or some kind of a garden situation. Similar to this, that is when you will find a path kind of leading like this to be the most helpful and the most natural to use because when you use them a little wider, there's it leaves a bigger gap to, between the flowers. It just doesn't look as natural and it doesn't look as pretty. I went ahead and I put like a little fence in front of it and another little bunny garden decoration. Just, I don't know. It just felt right at the moment. And that leads right up to the stairs. So this is the color of the flowers that I'm using on my own personal island. You can use any color flowers that you like, but I found this way of using the path to be really nice. It, I think the way it comes out is very pretty like this. And hopefully you guys have found Found this one to be a little bit helpful as well okay so this is the last one that I'm going to show you guys for today but one of the other things that I see a lot of people try to do is to put like tree stumps and put a path around it I'm going to show you how to make the path look very natural and to create like sort of holes in it so that you can place a flower or a tree stump in the center if you make it wider in some areas or if you have an area that connects to to another area like the way I have right here this would be connecting here but the path would still need to go in that direction as well so I'm gonna show you how that would work first I'm gonna put down a tree because that would be helpful right all right so I'm going to go ahead and try to lead this path that way and I'm gonna do it a little bit wider so that way you guys can see the way that looks when people do make a little bit of a wider path so this way is not always the most natural for me a lot of people do like very wide walking paths I personally I'm way too clutter core for this I have done it in the past though so I am familiar with how it rolls and basically you're doing everything you're just making it a little bigger a little wider and it's mostly so that you can put like a lot of trees along the edges you can put stuff down on the path if you would like I'm gonna speed this up for a little bit and then when I get around it I'm kind of gonna skip over the tree and then I will come back to it just to show you guys what I do around this area right here okay so right around this tree we want to kind of go around it we want to maintain the wide path but we want to go around it so if you have it skinnier on one edge, you're going to go ahead and use this singular piece right here. I'm going to use the middle piece to cover up this corner right here. And then I'm going to use the top piece to go in front of the tree like that. So it keeps its little natural edge just like that. And we're going to do the same thing over here and use the middle. And then I'm going to use the side piece and then we're going to use the middle piece again and I'm gonna use the bottom piece right here and then the middle piece again right over here. So if you're trying to make your path kind of double as like a pathway and also like an area that, a functional area as well, this works for that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some decor around here so that you can see in which instances something like this could work.
so here is what we have in this area so when i pulled it out and i made this wide path i had the dirt go all the way around the cedar tree right over here i put decorational items directly on the path so this retro transportation stop is sitting on our path and basically it is it kind of encompasses like all of it you know i never do it like this but now that i've done it i kind of like it i do it's it grew on me as i was working with it and i do think see how this would be really good in like a forest core or like an abandoned kind of island okay and this is where i'm going to leave you guys thank you so much for joining me i appreciate it if you made it this far in the video Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. I know you could have been anywhere in the entire world and you chose to spend a little of your time here with me. I appreciate you so much for that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.